and welcome to Beyond Technique, the podcast that empowers photographers to bring their businesses to the next level, brought to you by Platypod, Photofocus, and Skip Cohen University. This is Shamira Young, and I'm joined by my co-host and co-pilot during these crazy times, Skip Cohen. Wow. I have to think about this for a minute because none of us want to be on a plane now. So yeah. I'm the ground, I'm the ground outdoor pilot. Right. On the um, ground as, plane. Yeah. As we go through one of the scariest times, certainly in my lifetime. Mm. Uh, it's interesting. But yeah. And, and pretty much in, it's not even American history anymore. It's global. Yeah. Um, but I got to tell you, I'm, I'm having some fun. I mean, <sighs> Look, whenever we're stuck with downtime, whether it's a snow day or we're told to shelter in place down here in Florida during a hurricane, um, none of us have ever experienced what we're going through now. And you've got this big giant unknown and Sheila and I are both exercising, social distancing and sort of self quarantining um, where we feel great. We don't have any. We. Thank God we don't. We're not dealing with Corona directly in our home, but we're doing what everybody's doing, and you're stuck at home and you're trying to figure out what to do. And I suppose I'm bringing this up because <laughs> Platypod is a sponsor um, of this podcast. But I'm having a blast fine tuning or trying to fine tune my macro skills. I've got a Lumix G8 uh, G9, and I've got a macro lens. And I'm using the, I've got it set up on the uh, Platypod Max with a couple of the goosenecks and those great little Lytra lights. And I'm having a ball in terms of just trying to understand how I can photograph and do things more like our buddy Don Komarechka does. <laughs> oh, and, you know, many of us are at home. And the cool thing about, with, about Platypod is that with it, your house can become your playground and your creative field. And you're absolutely right. Now is the perfect time to experiment with the platypod and grow as a photographer. Because guess what? Even though times are tough, which is kind of an understatement, times are crazy, but there's still room for personal growth. Platypod is great for that. Yeah. And that that actually kind of leads us into one of the things that I wanted to talk about today, because Unlike our other Beyond Technique episodes, every now and then we do one that's just you and me riffing back and forth about things that we know are going on in the industry, that people are sharing with us, um, ideas. And right now, I mean, it you couldn't get a stronger definition of downtime mm. uh, mm -hmm. business for just about everybody, regardless of what business you're in, has pretty much dried up. And I think we've all got a choice to make of, all right, do, do we sit in the corner and, and panic or do we take advantage of the time to try and raise the, the bar on our skill set, on things that we've wanted to do and haven't had time to do? Uh, there's a great line, uh, Shamir. In fact, I used it in a blog post recently. Sheila's got it actually framed on a wall in her home, and it simply says, faith is being sure of what you hope for and certain of what you do not see. Mm. So we're all yes. sitting here hoping for this crisis to be over, and it's hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel. So one area that everybody should be thinking about right now, because our topic today is, is going to be a handful of things that you can start doing, and we're going to keep adding to that um, over the next few weeks and through some other resources that Shamir and I are working on. But this is a great time to fine tune your skill set. I'm so tired of photographers who will tell me they'll go, oh, yeah, I'm a natural light specialist. Well, every time we hear that, we all know what that means. First of all, we all love the look of natural light. In fact, some of the most beautiful portraits ever done uh, by people like Sue Bryce, um, Bobby Lane are, are images that look like window light, but they were done in a studio with great lighting. And this is the time to get rid of that, that stigma of being afraid of using um, artificial lighting and learning how to light. And there's so much available. There's stuff on YouTube. All you have to do is, is Google Bobby Lane, Tony Corbell. There's some great stuff that's out there just on videos to watch with one light, two light, three light, four light setups. 
Um, another another thing to fine tune, and it fits in with what I said I'm doing on on playing with macro. I am so weary of horrible ring shots and mm. detail shots from wedding photographers. This is a perfect time for you to fine tune and take 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 a couple of pieces of jewelry and find yourself a flower and experiment and yes. work on developing. Yeah. Develop your macro skills. Um, and then there, we, we could turn this into just a podcast today about your skill set. But the whole point is don't let this time go by where you got sucked into the depression that we're all feeling. And boy, I'll tell you, it's tough. Take the time to be positive and think about, all right, what am I going to do right now that I haven't had time to do prior to this crisis? Dare I say we come out stronger because of this crisis. When times are the hardest, that's when we build character. And you are are so right about fine-tuning your skill set. And speaking of fine-tuning, it's also a great time for us to fine-tune our marketing plans for the year ahead. I know many of us as photographers kind of operate by the seat of our pants when things are busy. Well, things are not busy right now. And as far as photography clients go, and now is the perfect time to make some plans, some marketing plans for the year ahead. Yes, business has slowed down and it is what it is, but start planning what you can do to reconnect with your clients after the crisis is over or even better yet. Plan what you can do to keep in touch with them now. For example, if you don't have a newsletter, I know many photographers are, I don't want to know if I, I don't know if I want to use the word afraid, but overwhelmed at the thought of, of finding the time to put out a newsletter. Well, now is the perfect time and you do have time. And a newsletter is actually a wonderful thing right now because it allows you to keep in touch with your client base. Even though you may not be shooting portraits or working with your clients rather no matter what kind of photographer you are you can still keep in touch with your clients so that after this crisis is over you will remain top of mind with them and when they need photos you want them to think of you first and a newsletter is a great way to do that another idea is to plan a promotion to launch when life goes back to normal when the crisis is over when we're not quarantined plan a promotion i think and skip Tell me if you agree. I think people are probably going to be pretty celebratory <laughs> when we can go back to normal, go back to restaurants, movies, and some kind of fun promotion would be the perfect thing to do when we can go back to shooting. What do you think? Oh, I couldn't agree more. In fact, if you're going to buy stock at all, I buy it in Pepto-Bismol because <laughs> when this thing is over, um, there's going to be some celebrating oh, out my, there. And you have no um, idea. And, yeah. Oh. No, it's just it, it. It's a horrible situation, everybody, and and we're not trying to minimize it. We're just no. trying to help everybody focus on the skill set that you've spent years developing. It's not going to go to waste. Um, in fact, along with marketing plans, this is a great time to be able to look for some partnerships with other vendors or photographers in the community, and maybe it starts with just checking in with your lab on new ideas, on new products you might want to bring in. Um, other vendors in the community, getting together with a florist, for example, and being able to cross-promote. I know a few years ago I was in the Boston area teaching a workshop, and I just went I would just went into Google and looked for florists, and I only found one florist that actually had a referral program with photographers. And on, on that particular site, they had a link uh, for wedding photographers. And then on those two or three wedding photographers they had, there was also a link on their sites back to the florist. So being able to cross promote and look for some partnerships. Um, also, everybody always thinks it's taboo, but don't be afraid to partner with another photographer. There are only so many days a year you can shoot. And again, as the, as we get out of the crisis, business is going to start to change again and get more back to some level of normalcy. Mm -hmm. And what a great idea as a, a wedding photographer, for example, partnering with somebody that photographs uh, children, newborns, because statistically most brides within a certain amount of time, and I don't know what the stats are, but I heard a few years ago that if 
brides under, I think it was brides under 25, um, typically had the first child, I want to say within two years or three years after the wedding. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's accurate anymore or not, but it doesn't make any difference. Couples get married and couples start families. So being able to have a referral program and partner with another photographer who's got a different specialty than yours is another way to be able to start to expand your marketing in into what is going to be the true busy season of 2020. And at this time, I would think other businesses would be more than willing to work with you to plan something for the future, um, especially with everything at a standstill now. I would think they would be motivated to be able to do something productive like plan for the future and work with you. Absolutely. Now and is the time. Now is the time. And now is also the time to clean up your database. If you have your client information spread all over the place, scribbled down on post-it notes or scattered in your Facebook message, messenger inbox, for example, now is the perfect time to, to get organized. And just to offer a suggestion, um, if you're not using an online platform yet, I know there are many, there are many. But the one that I use, and they're not paying me to say this, but Sprout Studio is a great place, or other services like Sprout Studio, where you can have all of your client information organized, their contact info in one place, put your their photos up there, and it will make your life so much easier so that you can hit the ground running when this crisis is over. And speaking of Sprout Studio, I, I love talking about Sprout Studio because... Brian Capricci and Robert Knoll, who are involved and the key people behind it, are good buddies, and I've spent a lot of time with them. And Brian is a full-time working wedding photographer. Robert is both a an educator um, at one of the schools in Canada and also uh, an active shooter. So you've got a system that's been been built for photographers by photographers, and it's it, very cool. Um, and along with cleaning up your your database, um, let's talk about how you might use it. Um, this was an idea that, that Dr. T at Platypot and I were talking about the other day. The point is that if you're a wedding photographer, and that's an easy one to use because it's such a good example and everybody understands what goes into photographing uh, a wedding – Go back to some of the clients you've had over the last two or three years and suggest a portrait session. Mm -hmm. Now is the perfect time. You've got downtime. Uh, you can do it uh, outdoors. We're starting to get into more spring weather. Even, even up north, it's warming up and you're getting some nice days outside. Uh, do it outside. Do it on location. One of the things I see happening more and more with wedding photographers as a result of this crisis uh, it's going to be a while before you've got a wedding party, family grouping to do an hour before a big reception. Um, but it is the right time to be able to put more focus on better engagement sessions. And it is going to become, I can see it becoming a, a, a significant part of wedding coverage. So being able to go back to your database and going back to clients um, that you photographed their wedding previously and saying, hey, you know, it's time for a new family portrait of you guys. In fact, going back years ago, David Zeiser at holiday time would go back to his brides and grooms that he'd photograph um, a year or more and say, hey, you know, happy anniversary and can't believe it's been a year. I'd love to do a portrait sitting. Your only cost will be the prince, but I'm happy to do the sitting for you guys. Come out. That's my gift to you. So he was doing it at holiday time. Now is a good time to just take advantage of it and keep in touch with your clients with some new ideas and offering them new products. And that goes back to also checking with your lab and just calling and saying, come on, what's new? That is a great, a great idea. And, and speaking of, of making new images, now is the perfect time to clean up the images on your website, your image galleries. I'm guilty of this. It's one of the most common things I think we photographers tend to whine about is that we have not updated our websites. And why? Usually we say because we don't have the time. Well, 
now we all have the time. So when this crisis is over, we have no excuse and we should have the most amazing looking websites and organized relevant galleries that we've ever had when this crisis is over so that again we can hit the ground running make sure your website is easy to navigate have your best images up there um, if you're stuck at home with family get some opinions from your spouse from your kids from your partner whoever about the images that you have up on your website because it is important to get a third a second a third opinion outside eyes uh, when it comes to our own photos, our own images that we make, I think we get very close to our images. And again, I'm guilty of having photos up on my website that I personally like and I love the backstory, but they're not always the best images and we should have our best images up there. And so now is the perfect time to ask your spouse or your kid, hey, you know, what do you think of these images? Which ones are the best ones? It's time to basically call our images on our website and make sure our galleries look amazing. And just a reminder, everybody, you don't need thousands of images. No. In fact, I, I did a website review years ago, and the woman had over 4,000 images. Uh, oh. And uh, male or female, everybody's just as bad. Um, she happened to be the exception and the most I've ever seen. But the reality is you really don't need any more than 10 to 12 really good images in under any one category and then people get around it and they say well I'll break a wedding up into like six different parts well everybody knows how a wedding unfolds just make it your very best images and what I've always said in the past and continue to say make every image what I call a wow print meaning it's so good it there's such wow power in it that it's the only image you would have to show to get hired and that's what everybody should have in there in their galleries. So let's talk about blog posts. Mm -hmm. This is the perfect time to build a stash of blog posts. And a lot of people are sitting there, sitting there saying, yeah, but what do I write about? Well, think about who your target audience is for just about all our listeners. Your target audience is mom. That's because women make 98% of the purchase decisions to hire you in the first place. So knowing that, then think about what mom is dealing with right now. Mm -hmm. This is the equivalent. I know how many moms get excited when the kids go on to summer vacation and then a week later they can't wait for them to come back in school <laughs> and they've still got two months of the summer to go yet. The point is that mom is home with the kids. So position yourself as the photography expert in your community and start doing a series of, of tips, for example, on how to take better images. Mom isn't going to open up a studio down the street and take business away from you. Talk about posing. Talk about projects. Um, we've got some things coming up on the Platypod blog, uh, thanks to Hilmar Smith. Um, she's got two kids at home, and she's looking for ideas on how she can use her photography um, to enhance their experience as a family when they're essentially you know, stuck indoors through this horrible crisis. Well, this is where photography comes in. This is where your blog comes in. Um, and think about what things can you do to help mom, including um, sharing your empathy and understanding what she's going through and, and the fact that we are all afraid now. You can't find anybody that isn't nervous about what's going on. And if you're not we're nervous about corona, then you're nervous about the stock market and the economy. So you'll find something out there mm -hmm. to put a little fear in your heart. And this is where... Your blog posts can help create a different kind of environment to be more helpful to mom and also take advantage of this downtime so that when we come out of the crisis, ideally, if you have a blog, my recommendation has always been if you're not posting twice a week, then give it up until you've got enough of a stash. And when you, when you have a stash, you can rely on what's in the pipeline here and there when you don't have something new you want to write about. You know, I love I love the word you used, helpful, being helpful. And I think during this time, being helpful is one of the best things that we can do. Even though we're stuck at home, we have the blessing of of the online world. Some sometimes might call it a curse, but it's also <laughs> a blessing because we can reach other people. And this actually relates to our next point about using this as an opportunity because there is opportunity in everything and so using this as an opportunity to be helpful to
into your community and being known as an online expert. And Skip, you talked about how we can be putting out blog posts to help mom, you know, better document the kids so they're all stuck at home because they're all stuck at home rather. And, and, and you're right, this is the perfect time to put out tips. We have our blog posts, but we also have social media. I tend to get comments. One of the most common comments that I get from local people, actually, when I'm at a friend's birthday party or whoever, they'll say, oh, I love the tips you put out on Facebook the photography tips about how to edit better, how to use Photoshop, simple tools in Photoshop. And that always, I don't know why, but it catches me by surprise. I kind of put them out there and I wonder, you know, you get a little interaction. You don't know if people really like it. And then in person, that's the most common comment I get. And so I know I will personally be ramping that up to put out more tips to again, be helpful to the community. You know what? And along with your tips, there are places in everybody's community that they know are great to photograph in. It might be an alley. It might be a, a, a field of, of sunflowers. Obviously, sunflowers aren't blooming right now. But there are places in the community. Use that as well. Mm-hmm. Share outdoor locations with people because everybody needs – the one place that we know is relatively safe right now is outside. Mm-hmm. Um, so share ideas in your blog posts about where to go. Um, And speaking of getting outside, really outside, um, let's kind of wrap it up and talk about how much is out there in cyberspace. So just go into YouTube and put any photographer you know in the search box. Um, Not just any photographer you know. You probably need to go any photographer who who you know teaches or who is out there. Um, You'll be surprised at how much great education is out there right now. Um, lynda.com is another one. Creative Live um, is another one. And then you've got just about every educator that you've ever heard at a program um, has something they've they've released. Um, mm-hmm. There are newsletters that, that are published. There are companies that Shamir and I work with, like Tamron, that does an ongoing newsletter, and Tamron has their own channel. Don't, re- don't forget to look up your... The, the companies whose products you use and see what they're sharing on YouTube. There are 200, I think 221 videos in the, in the Tamron channel. Um, we've got 25 or 26. Um, we haven't been out there quite as long in the Platypod channel. Um, all of them have got ideas and information. And then you've got people like, oh, who, Shamara? Tony Corbell is one. Um, whose videos have you watched oh over goodness. the years? Um, Sarah Petty's another one, which I know is more marketing. Um, but good stuff. Oh, my goodness. Amazing stuff. Um, who else? Oh, oh Peter Hurley. Oh, yeah. Um, yep. Yep. Peter's got stuff out there. Tamara right? Lackey has so many of her of her podcasts. Uh, her video podcasts are there. Yeah. Um, going into some of the retailers. Um, Adorama, B and H have got their educational channels, mm-hmm. uh, but it, it, boy, it goes on and on. And then there are also live programs going on. Michelle Salentano is online with talking about family portraiture, mm-hmm. um, and there are people doing portfolio reviews. Mm-hmm. So take advantage of cyberspace because it's one spot right now that that is safe. Um, in terms of your personal health, uh, and you can go out and you can find all of this great education and then practice it. Take advantage of Roberto Valenzuela's old line of, you know, practice doesn't make perfect. What if you're practicing it wrong? Mm -hmm. And he's 100% right, and that explains why my golf game sucks (laughs) Um, because I'll practice, but I practice wrong. So being able to use some of these videos and go into the icons and people that we all respect so much and come up with ideas during this downtime um, is going to help fill up your day with something better than than worrying about the virus. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Well, that takes us to the end of our list. Is there anything you think we left out? Well, there, hang on a second. I'm looking up. I want to hit everybody. Just We didn't leave anything out here, but I want to make, 
I got an email this morning from a group here in Sarasota called Dream Large, and they tied in um, four snippets to help everybody get through this. Um, and I want to hit on two of them. One, one is just called stay in touch. And it's simply find ways to talk about how you feel with others, connect with friends and loved ones through video chats, phone calls, texting, and email reaching out can help you and help them. And then the other one is limit your news intake. Yes. There's a thin, and I'll just read what it says here. There's a thin line between being aware and living in constant fear and anxiety. You don't have to be constantly seeking information. Get the facts, not the rumors, and listen to public health experts who can help navigate the path ahead. And that was actually off of uh, something called the happy broadcast. So it might be worth, I haven't looked at the broadcast, but I saw these four things that came out in this group from Dream Large, and it was just, so well done and it, it we've all got to keep it in perspective everybody i love that that's great that's the perfect way to wrap up this episode and works for me you know it's i do want to make sure and ask skip where can folks find you online well with me it's always the same place skip cohen university.com and skip cohen on twitter and skip cohen on facebook and my email is skip at mei500.com and you'll also find me and Shamara both doing things with Platypod. And Shamara, where do they go to find you? Folks can send me an email at Shamara at photofocus.com. That is my first name, C-H-A-M-I-R-A at photofocus.com. And we love getting emails with questions, ideas, topics. We want to hear the topics that you would like us to cover because we will absolutely um, love to consider covering those on this on this podcast it moves and shapes how this podcast goes in the future and with that said we hope this episode was helpful we hope it really you know gives our listeners some actionable tips that they can take as opposed to sitting around and twiddling your thumbs and being depressed there are still things we can do and that was our goal and hey everybody just remember everything you're afraid of now we all are Nobody is alone in this, and if you need a little assurance or whatever, you know where to find me, you know where to find Shamira, and we're an industry where everybody has always watched each other's backs, and that's what we're all doing the best to do right now. And we want to thank our listeners for joining us. Please tell your friends about this podcast, especially if they have the burning desire to improve their photography business and hit the ground running after this crisis is over, especially. We look forward to having you all with us next time on Beyond Technique, brought to you by Platypod, Photo Focus, and Skip Cone University.